Hello, hi, this is Ahmed Zamzam uh, from Confluent. Uh, I lead the technical marketing team here at uh, Confluent. And today I'm super excited to walk you through how to unlock real-time AI uh, with Confluent and together with our friends at uh, Databricks uh, and, and AWS. Uh, and the best way to do this is to walk you through a demo. So this is a demo for um, a fictitious company, uh, a mortgage provider that want to use AI uh, to process mortgage applications in real time. So this is a global mortgage provider that provides mortgages uh, around the world and uh, they want to process mortgage applications uh, in real time. And the way they'll do this, they'll ingest these mortgage applications in, in Confluent and they will use AI um, uh, agents to process uh, these uh, mortgage applications uh, in real time. Now, after we process uh, these mortgage applications, we'll also um, create some dashboards on, on these mortgage applications. But before doing this, let's go through the architecture diagram, uh, or at least the, the first half of, of the architecture diagram. So before processing these mortgages uh, with our AI agents, what we'll do first, we want to ingest the data. So we have three main data sources. We have credit score information that holds uh, credit score information uh, on on the uh, applicants that are applying for the mortgages. We have historical payments for each applicants and whether or not this payment was successful. And we have uh, the live stream of uh, mortgage applications. So what we'll do, we'll use Flink to um, turn this live stream of mortgage applications into a real-time contextualized data product. So first we'll enrich it with credit score information to create enriched mortgages. And then we will further enrich it with payments to, uh, to create a real-time contextualized data product that we'll use to feed our AI agents with. First thing we'll do, we'll need to create a cluster that will hold the data that we'll ingest into the cluster. Uh, Confluent Cloud offers many different uh, cluster types that um, are tailored to any uh, workload needs or cost requirements. Now for our use case, since this data is private, this data needs to stay off the public internet. And for this reason, we went with enterprise clusters. Now these clusters are fully serverless. They're instantly provisionable and they offer private networking. And as you can see here, with just a few clicks, we have a cluster uh, up and running. It's that easy. So now that we have a cluster up and running, we want to ingest the data that we spoke about a little bit earlier on. So let's start with the credit score data coming from the uh, um, Oracle database. So here we'll uh, rely on the fully managed uh, connectors. Uh, and again, this, is, this process is made super simple. Uh, here we're using the Oracle Extreme CDC Source Premium Connector. All we need to do, we just need to enter a few um, database connection details, uh, like username, password to connect to the database. And then um, prefix of the topics that we'll write data into and the tables that we will capture the changes from uh, and write to uh, to Confluent. So now we have a connector up and running and the data is flowing from the Oracle database to the applicant credit score topic in Confluent and this is how it looks like. So this is one data source down. We still have two more to go. We have historical payments and uh, the live stream of mortgage applications. Now both of these are standard uh, Java producer apps. Let's take a deeper look at the historical uh, payments producer. So this is a topic that holds the entire historical payments for all applicants and whether or not uh, this payment uh, was successful. Now, it's also important to note that all of our uh, data is backed by a schema and the schema registry, and this is how uh, the historical payment schema uh, looks like. On to our last and final data source, mortgage applications. This is either coming from the mobile banking app or the website. Here, the applicant enters a few details like their name, property value, loan amount, and then they submit the application. And this application ends up in a Kafka topic inside the Confluent Cloud. And this is how it looks like. Now, this applicant is John Doe, and this is the application we'll follow throughout the uh, demo uh, today. So now that we have the data ingested into our uh, cluster, next thing, let's process this data before we pass it over to our uh, AI agents. So this is a data portal. This is a one-stop shop where we make all of our data products easily accessible and discoverable throughout the organization. Now, if we click on mortgage applications, the topic that we just ingested data into, um, you'll find some useful business information like the owner of the topic, um, the schemas associated with this topic. 
And you can also define what we call data quality rules directly on the schema. So for example, here we're saying any mortgage application that is coming in that does not have a valid payslip ID will get routed to the dead letter queue. Now what's cool about these rules is that you define them centrally here in Confluent and they got pushed to the client with zero code changes required on the client side. And this is uh, one of these perfect examples of um, a mortgage application that is coming in that does not have a valid payslip ID and it got routed to the uh, dead letter queue. So now what we want to do, we want to enrich the mortgage applications with the credit score data coming from the Oracle database. That's what we're doing here. We're using Flink Java Table API code to create a new data product, enriched mortgage applications, that joins these two data sources together. What we're also doing, we're creating a new custom field, mortgage monthly insurance cost, using a user-defined function. This user-defined function takes in loan amount, property value, and credit score, to determine the monthly mortgage insurance cost on this applicant. And it's using a custom user defined function uh, written in Java as well. Now this, the user defined function and the job get pushed to Confluent Cloud where it runs uh, um, there on, on Confluent Cloud serverless uh, compute. And the result will, the mortgage applications will be continuously uh, processed in real time. And here you can see John's application. I think he has a pretty healthy credit score at 116. So next step, let's enrich this further with historical payments. But first, let's process historical payments by aggregating all payments for each applicant into a single row. So we'll create a new data product, applicant payment summary, and this time we're using Flink SQL. So you can either use um, Flink Java or SQL directly from, from the UI. So this is how applicant payment summary looks like. Pretty simple stuff. Uh, applicant and all their entire historical payments grouped in a single row. So we have now two data products, applicant payment summary and enriched mortgage applications. The next thing we'll do, we'll create one final data product, enriched mortgage mortgages with payments, that we'll use to power our AI agents with. And that's what we're doing here. So we're creating this new data product uh, and, um, and, and this data product has full context and we'll use this data product to uh, power our AI agents uh, with. So looking at John's application, you can see all the additional fields that we enriched uh, his mortgage application with. So starting from uh, the credit score all the way to the historical payments. So now we're ready to power our AI agents. So this is how uh, our AI agents looks like. So we have the enriched mortgage payments uh, topic that we just created. And then this topic uh, will go through uh, three agents that run sequentially. The first agent runs in AWS Lambda and this does overall fraud and credit risk uh, assessment. Um, and it uses a cloud model that is running uh, on Bedrock. Then the output of this agent is then consumed by agent two. And this is the agent that makes the actual mortgage decision and recommends uh, an interest rate. This agent runs entirely on Flink SQL in Confluent Cloud. And then the output of agent three is then consumed by agent, uh, sorry, the output of agent two is then consumed by agent three. Uh, and based on this decision uh, that came out of agent two, agent three decides whether to uh, generate a mortgage offer or uh, a rejection letter. And at the end, you should see something that looks like uh, uh, what you see here in front of you, the final uh, mortgage uh, decision. So let's see these uh, three uh, agents in action. So agent one runs on, um, as I mentioned, AWS Lambda. So what we'll do, we'll use the fully managed Lambda Sync Connector to stream data from enriched mortgage uh, applications with payments directly to the Lambda function in real time. And then the Lambda function, we have, uh, we're using a cloud model uh, running on Bedrock, and we're using a fraud tool that is bound to the model to process uh, these uh, mortgage applications real time. And this is how the code looks like. So the output is a continuous stream of validated mortgage apps that is also sent to Confluent Cloud. So what does um, uh, validated mortgage apps mean? It contains an overall fraud risk, credit risk score, and most importantly, agent reasoning. Now looking at John's application, you'll see here that the agent had full, has full confidence in, in John's ability to repay this mortgage, and it assigned a moderate risk 
to the uh, overall uh, application. And the reason why it's moderate, because I think John has uh, a slightly high credit uh, card uh, utilization. Agent 2 runs on Flink SQL. Um, so what we need to do, we need to register the model in Confluent Catalog and then use the built-in ML predict function to pass the output of Agent 1 as an input to Agent 2. We'll also give it a, a system prompt um, and then uh, the output of, of Agent 2, as I mentioned, is a decision or continuous decisions and a uh, re recommended uh, interest rate. Now, looking at John's application, you'll see here that um, I, I think because he has good credit uh, score, um, John got approved uh, for his mortgage, and I think he got a pretty decent uh, um, interest rate. But again, the agent gives full uh, reasoning. Now, based on this decision, agent three either generates an offer or a rejection letter. So again, runs on Flink SQL, so we register the model with a system prompt in Confluent Catalog. And then we use the built-in ML predict function to pass the output of agent two as an input to agent three. And then the output is either a mortgage offer or a rejection letter. Now in John's case, so John got approved, so he has an offer, but because we're in, in financial services, we need to keep humans in the loop. So before sending the offer for, to, um, to John uh, right away, we first send this offer to a human and if the human agrees with the agent decision that's what's what you see here the human will approve and send the offer to john so what we did here we fully automated the mortgage application process all the way from submission to the mortgage offer and decision uh, now i understand that this is uh, could be a rather simplistic approach uh, but just shows the art of the possible what you could do with these agents and how easily you can get started with uh, with ai uh, agents so at the end uh, john has an offer that was fully automated and the human agrees with the agent decision and um, uh, we sent this offer to to john now the next thing we want to do uh, we want to expose the mortgage decisions uh, data that we created uh, as an output from agent 2 to our users uh, of the data lake to do some deeper analysis on these mortgage uh, decisions. Now, these users are using Databricks as their pre preferred analytical tool. So the easiest way to get your Kafka data into Databricks or Iceberg uh, is using Tableflow. And that's what we'll do here. We'll, we'll uh, enable Tableflow um, on, on mortgage decisions. So what is Tableflow? Tableflow makes it push button simple to expose your Kafka data as either Iceberg or Delta format. Now, in our case, it's Delta, so we pick Delta as a storage format, and then we choose a storage mechanism. In this case, it's our own uh, S3 bucket. And then with literally three clicks, the data and the associated schema are available in Delta format. So no more manual schema mapping, no more custom code. It just works. It's as simple as that. So now that the data is available on Databricks side, let's see what we can do with this data. In Databricks, we're using Genie AI. This is a tool that allows us to interact with the data using natural language and build uh, custom uh, dashboards. So here we're saying, show me a pie chart with all mortgages that were approved this month broken down uh, by state. What Genie does, it understands the intent, translates this intent into a SQL query, and uses the SQL query to retrieve and display uh, back the results. And here you can see the, the, the SQL query. So this is one example. Um, let's take a look at another example. We can say, show me a bar chart, bar chart this time, uh, of all mortgages that were rejected this month, uh, broken down by state. Again, same thing happens, understands the intent, translates it to a SQL query, and uses the query to retrieve and display back uh, the results. Now the point here is that together Confluent and Databricks, we make it super simple to extract insights from your data. Now, these are very powerful analytical use cases that anyone in the business could do, regardless of their technical expertise. With Confluent, it's now super simple to send data to Databricks, and with Databricks, you literally can interact and extract insights from the data using uh, natural language. Now, I can stop here, or you can use this data to power so many other use cases uh, on Databricks side. But what we'll do, we will actually take this a step further on the Confluent side. 
Um, so we recently received a request from the audit team. They want access to uh, the entire historical data of mortgage decisions. Now the question here comes, how can we access the entire historical data and table flow while making sure that the um, real-time data in Kafka um, are fully reflected in the results? The answer is snapshot queries. Snapshot queries uh, is a, a new feature uh, from Confluent that allows you to take a snapshot of the existing data set at the time the query was initiated. And, um, and, and the best thing about these queries is that they support hybrid reads, so both reads from Tableflow and from Kafka without any code changes. It just works. And this is a perfect example here. They want to know all the mortgages that were approved in Texas with interest rate below 3.7%. And note here, they did not specify where to read the data from. They simply enabled snapshot mode and Flink did the rest. So this is a very cool feature, in, in my opinion, uh, that you can use in so many different uh, use cases, uh, like ad hoc analysis, uh, debugging purposes, or development. Um, there are so many different things that you can uh, use it in. So that's it. Uh, we've successfully processed mortgage applications uh, from uh, the mortgage submission all the way to the offer or uh, rejection letter. Now, this approach is much better because it's more accurate, uh, much faster, and it provides an overall better customer experience. Now this demo or workshop is available on GitHub. You can either, uh, you can try it out yourself by scanning this QR code or uh, uh, visiting this, this link here. And it's super simple to set up. And yeah, that's it. Thanks a lot for tuning in and happy building.